Football is a sport where you learn how to find yourself, become friends. It gives them more of a of, 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 of sense of direction. It makes them say that, hey, if I can compete, if I can be a winner, I can be a winner in everything. When I grew up, I wanted to be a teacher. A football player. A scientist. A can I win it? Football player. And if I can't be there, I'll be an NBA player. I started watching that when, when one of the football players that got killed right, right after the storm. And the next thing you know, another athlete got killed. I'm like, whoa, hold up. So all of a sudden, I said, hold on, let me start writing this down. So I start putting his name, Joseph Single first, and the rest of them, and so on, so on, so on. Since, since 2003 to now, I have lost 28 football players. Every time I come outside, it's either somebody getting killed, somebody getting shot. Uh, I actually lost a brother uh, in 1995. People selling drugs. That's what I see night in and night out, being a kid. And now that I got to 28, it started to open people's minds up. It should let the world know, hey man, you're losing a lot of kids. He's been student of the month many a time. In the beginning, he always was a hyperactive kid. After his mother and the incident happened, brutal. He said it was a crime of passion. Him and his brother Jerron Lucky like was going through some some withdrawals of trying to understand which kids would do if they lose a parent. I, I think sometimes we forget, right, that when bad things happen, especially to kids, that that's going to have an impact on the way they function, on the way they interact with their peers, with teachers. To really understand trauma, we also have to admit that bad things happen, right? As a society, as a community, we have to recognize that there are some really bad things that happen to our children. She put the kids to bed, as far as I know. And the oldest child, which is Jerron, woke up his little brother and asked him, did he want something to eat? And he brought him in the kitchen and he found their mother. Very hard for a seven-year-old and a three-year-old. He did hit me hard. Life surely dealt me some very bad cards. Now here I sit, stuck in time, unable to get you off of my mind. Whoever it was took, took their mommy. They never had that chance to recognize, you know, what it was to go to the park and just do things as, as kids do with their mother and father. And sometimes it's still hard for me to get it out. <clears throat> Certain things be going on, I'll break down. And I guess I'ma always do that for the rest of my life because that was my baby. It was fun when you were around, left it with our main sound. Going outside, playing at the park, too young to learn that bad thing happened in the dark. My heart was broken and went away. You left me wide open and I needed you to stay just a kid when you died. Nothing I could do but cry, cry, cry. Wow. Uh, my heart was broken and went away. You left me wide open and I, I needed you that. to stay just a kid when you died. Nothing I could do but cry, cry, cry. As a society, we tend to blame the victim, right? So like, you just weren't strong enough. Oh, those parents just weren't good enough. 
he should be able to, you know, to handle what he's dealt. Well, what about like, okay, you, you played football and you broke your leg. Were you just not physically strong enough? No. It's the same thing with mental health. It's not that person's fault. It's very normalized for young people than chronic, toxic environment in which they live. There's almost not an expectation that they should be happy. The thing I like least about Central City is like they got a lot of gunfire down here. They have a lot of criminals in my neighborhood. And they always come around my neighborhood selling drugs. When nobody is outside, I don't like when I'm by myself. The thing I don't like my, about my neighborhood is people be killing around my uh, neighborhood, and I don't like it. And because I have uh, grown up that my mom is dead, so, uh, and that's it. When I ask an entire classroom, who here has lost someone? Three quarters of the room always raises their hands. And so many of, of, of the children in our city we're demanding that they live through this. What we noticed going into the schools was that what seemed to be behavioral disruptions was really due to untreated trauma. With the particular violence in this city that we have, we have to think of it as what happens when you get into a car accident or you almost get into a car accident? You see it coming over and it's about to hit you, right? All of a sudden, fight or flight or freeze happens. And the adrenaline, the cortisol, all of that floods our body. And so it tenses us up, our heart starts racing. Imagine that not shutting off. So if you live on a block where violence is a constant, a lot of these kids, just to walk from here to the corner store, are like that all the time. And then, go sit down and do a math test. There's so much pressure on schools here to be high performing. It seems like the path of least resistance for the schools to be like, this kid is acting out, let's just put him over here in time out or let's have him go home. And that's probably the worst thing that can happen for a kid. And these are the kids that, that you know, that, that are really hard to love sometimes. But that's really what they need. Leah, okay, I'll go find her. Thank you so much, I was gonna ask you about it. I think a lot of schools maybe have like a more of a one size fits all model and so you make it or you break it kind of thing. So it's definitely not what we do here, which makes it a lot harder. Every single one of our staff members has been trained mm -hmm. in the last three years. What does it mean to recognize and respond to the symptoms of trauma? How does trauma affect the brain, the body, the behavior of kids, what to look for, how to promote resilience, what are things we can do in the classroom to promote safety and trustworthiness and transparency? How's your day going? We need to talk. Yeah, we do. I'ma find you. Can you dance all the Come on, I gotta give you this blanket really quick. Yeah, it's all the way up here on the third floor. Yes, it is, Tiny. Ooh, this boyfriend's got you. So now for nap time, you have your own personal unique blanket that's bright and colorful and warm. You welcome. I think when you neglect what the, the actual deep down issues are, then we're, we're only trying to put a band-aid on some of what's going on. You have schools full of kids with traumas. They're so overwhelmed and underwhelmed by what the resources are out there that they can actually utilize that it gets neglected. Not every kid who's been exposed to trauma really needs mental health treatment. They also just need to be able to have good relationships with people. Mentoring programs, you know, sports programs, dancing programs, all of those things where, where kids are able to have positive, caring relationships with adults. 
that is also a part of, of the solution. Always do what? Prepare yourself for, for yourself. yourself. Jinx. Can't talk. I don't know what is that. A jinx means you can't talk or you or you got go oh uh, you had to owe me a soda. We have a few players that used to cut up a lot. And like you could see where they growing and they maturing now. Just playing sports give us a break from being in that environment. You kind of feel like you are part of something. So just playing at the park every day, that's why I say sports was my outlet on life itself. Come on, put your helmet on. Come on, come on, come on. Tony. All right, go. You better go. You better go. Tony, you better go. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Go, 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 go. You the last one. Last one, gotta run again. Right on me. Don't take them helmets off. You got to move. Go get you some water. Use the bathroom. When I first got into this, you know what people you would be telling me? Oh, that's a bad punk. All they do is shoot. All they do is that. Come up in this environment. Either you're doing something or somebody doing something to you. And that's the model. I oftentimes say that trauma is the underbelly of violence. We know that if we don't treat trauma, and especially in boys, the likelihood of them getting involved in what we kind of call hot aggressive behaviors is quite likely. And so why aren't we not thinking about how to manage that as a health issue versus putting so much attention on policing and criminalizing these young people who have mental distress. After the storm, I still was in high school. I was playing basketball for uh, Old Perry Walker for a few games, but I had to quit because I had to take care of me and my child. I started working, working really wasn't getting me enough money, so I turned to selling drugs. At first I was just doing it just to get by, but I realized how much I was making. So I started doing it more and more and more. I never put an end on it, because as long as the money was coming, I wasn't going to turn it down. Until one time my brother had an incident with someone and it got violent, real violent. They had a big old shootout in front of Harris Casino. That when I realized that I need, to, I need to fall back. I need to get out of this life. But I didn't get out in time. After that was when the feds came. I'm a teacher. I'm the basketball coach as well. So that is really what I, I, I thrive at, being a basketball coach. Good story for you. Got a young kid, man, grew up in the St. Thomas all his life. That was a bad kid, man. That was a bad kid. No, they ain't cursing nobody out. He ain't do none of that. I said, man, this kid got, got in trouble, sold drugs, served time, got out, went to college, graduated. Man. That is a hell of a story. Now he's a school teacher. Bam! And that's one of the stories that need to be told. And I think if, if people understand that we not only just touch your life, we just try to change your life. I mean, hey, man, you, okay, you fell off. Okay, cool. You can bounce back. If Brenda can do it, anybody can do it. The typical kid to see a younger black man as a teacher with dreadlocks, kind of similar to them, I kind of fit in with them. That's how they look at me like, He's not supposed to be a teacher. I feel like I can, I can vibe more with the students because of their upbringing and it's similar to the same upbringing that I've had. Hopefully, I can steer them in the right direction. Come on, dog get! Come on, dog get! Like an animal! Ah! Like an animal! Ah! Here we go. Let's go! Let's go! To sum it up, I'm doing better now than I was doing when I was selling drugs because I have something that 
cannot be taken away from me. At any moment, a kid can change. At any moment, a kid can go down that negative road, but it's so hard to get back. We just got to keep our eyes on them, man. We got to understand them, we got to listen to them, and they got to listen to us. That boy, Big B. <laughs> Where your brother? Where EJ? Put your stuff on. I think it's time for us as a society to decide which side do we want to be on. Essentially then what we are doing is we're leaving the kids on their own on these streets. I highly doubt anyone would admit to wanting to do that. Smallest to biggest. And then everybody put, the, everybody put their helmet on. You don't got to buckle it up. Just put it on. Put your shoulder pads like this. And you walk in. Sit right there by him. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Get in there. Do we want to continue to create an underclass of people with very little opportunity to fulfill their potential or do we want to be more equitable and allow all children to have access to the supports that they need? Being in the neighborhood we in is hard and it's rough. I expect and any parent or grandparent expect their child or grandchild to be better. I have high hopes for them. My family says it's time to grow up, time to take a drink out of life cup, put aside all the bad ways, straighten up and have some better days. When reality trying to hit, I try to go through it. I knew it wasn't gonna last, but we still sitting here having a blast. Each one of them have their own personality. I know y'all know y'all kids. This is my man right here. Relentless, like, force, like, he just put everything on the line. Like a little fire crack, a jumping jack. <laughs> <laughs> when he get big, he gonna be some trouble. He gonna be some trouble for a lot of people when he get a little bigger. Thank you, Mike, for putting your body, your mind, everything on line, and get together in school. Keep, it, keep your head right in school, all y'all. See, I ain't know I was getting one here. <laughs> but I got it. Good job, good job, good job. Good job. I know. He know you. Yes! We won. Let's have it. Oh, hell, okay, all right. All right.